So we're here at CB2009 and uh, you're going to show us the Intel processors with the super microscope system. So what can you show us here? So actually what we, what we can show here is the general structure um, of a Core i7 uh, CPU, for example. What are the main differences to Project What? Um, one big difference to the, um, the Project What is the integrated memory controller. Right, so you don't have a NOS bridge anymore. You you have the memory controller in, in this inside the CPU. This requires a lot of other changes as well. Like you need um, um, you need a circuit which is controlling the communication between the cores and controlling the communication to the outside world, like the, the your PCI Express 16x graphics, and that's the, what we call QPI. That's a quick pass interconnect. The quick pass interconnect is also managing the traffic on the integrated level 3 cache. We've got four blocks, three megabyte each on Core i7 Extreme, so you've got 12 megabyte of level 3 cache. This cache is free addressable from any core. So any core can use any piece of the, uh, of the level 3 cache. There is also uh, integrated that um, when you have applications, for example, um, optimized for dual core, that the, um, the two cores can be closed down and the other two cores can be overclocked. So, automatically. So the overall um, power consumption of the CPU remains the same, but the performance goes up, especially for uh, single or dual core applications. Yes. Right, because not every application is multi-threaded. Does, does i7 use this new technology, their high-k metal gate? Yes, all the, all the 45 nanometer CPUs are using the, um, the high-k metal gate transistors. The reason why we had to do that was because the silicon gate oxide was at its limits. Right. The, the, the depth or the height of a silicon dioxide gate is five atoms. Yeah. Uh, that means as a silicon atom has got a, um, a diameter of 0.28 nanometers, so overall we were at 1.2 to 1.4 nanometers gate only. Um, to compare, a human hair is between um, 80 and 100, 100 micrometers. Okay. So it's a, it's a fraction of it, right? Um, because we had a lot of leaks, the, 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 the heat dissipation, the, the, the wasted energy um, was actually going to the outside world, so Pentium 4 was reaching 150 watts or more, so we had to look for a new material. A material with the same features like silicon dioxide, and, uh, and we came up with, uh, with a hafnium material. Hafnium. Is, that, is that what this is? Or no, is this is raw silicon. This is just silicon? This is just silicon. Is, it, is that the high case something you can show on the microscope or is it Unfortunately more? not. Because yeah. imagine, as I said, this layer is still five atoms. Five atoms? Yeah. Okay. Five atoms high. <laughs> no way to show that. No way. You need an, electro, uh, an electronic microscope. Yeah. Uh, this is just to show the structures in general. Yeah. Right? And what do you have here to show some old technologies or what's... Yeah, what we use is, basically this is this is atom, right? This yeah. is the atom die, this is the atom processor. Can we see that on the microscope? Yes, you can. So, there's the atom coming up. That's it? So the atom, at the atom, the, the space we have to do the bonding and packaging is too small. And that's the reason why we have added on top another layer where you've got all the connectors to the outside world. And what you see here is the connections and the connectors. If you look through, you can still see the, um, the same picture like we have with all the other CPUs. So you can see the transistor level. So this is behind it? It's behind it. So it's yeah. basically it's reverse. The connectors are on the top, not on the back, and okay. not on the side. Okay. Um, so that's why Atom is quite interesting, because, you know, this is the whole die, that, that's about it. That's it. And that's 1.6 gigahertz. Yeah. And just to show some nice picture, can you show some uh, old processor or something yes. that looks cool? Yes. What is that? That's a Pentium. Pentium? Pentium is uh, uh, three times the, uh, the structure, so Pentium is a 130 nanometer manufacturing process. When was that released? Uh, like 2000 or something like that before? Or? No, no, before 1995. 1995? Yeah. But it still looks really cool. 
So yeah, because because here you can actually really see the bonding, right? Here you can see how the connection is done to the outside world. It's basically the same way today, but it's a lot smaller structure, right? Because Pentium, I don't know how many pins. Um, Core i7 is uh, 1,366 pins connectors okay. you have got to the outside world. So, the, and it's a significantly smaller process. Right? When, you, when you compare the dies, this is Core i7, and this is the Pentium die. Here, with your normal eye, you can still see the structure. Here, you can't see much without a microscope. That's a really cool microscope. Intel should sell them and let people check out the, the so they can sit and watch on the HDTV. It looks nice. I don't know where the microscope is coming from. I have no idea. But it's really entertaining. It's nice yeah. colors. Yes. And all these colors, like yellow and red, is there a Yeah, reason? actually that's the because of the reflecting light of the microscope and we're working in different layers. It's, okay. it's uh, more than eight different layers. You've got different reflections and it gives you different colors and different angles. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome.